In revolutionary literature, the tactic is known as pressure from above and below. It's the strategy that Colonel House laid down in his book, Philip Drew, Administrator. Deliberately create problems, and then offer only those solutions that result in the expansion of government. Create conditions so frightful at home and abroad that the abandonment of personal liberties and national sovereignty will appear as a reasonable price for a return to domestic tranquility and world peace. If those who seek world dominion can stimulate leftist mobs into violent confrontation with local law enforcement and also provide exhaustive news coverage so that the entire nation can see and tremble, then the peaceful and freedom-loving majority can be programmed to accept a vast expansion of government powers and even a national police force offered supposedly to end the violence. Rich men's corporations publish and popularize revolutionary books and songs. Through advertising, rich men's businesses subsidize revolutionary magazines. Rich men's tax-exempt foundations pour millions of dollars into left-wing organizations. The federal establishment in Washington, through agencies like the OEO, provide weekly paychecks to thousands of hardcore revolutionaries. And so we return again to the basic question, why? Why does the establishment publicly condemn, but privately support, the anti-establishment movement? Former communist Jerry Kirk answers, The idea is to create a situation where the people are so frightened of the violence all around them, that they will throw their hands up in the air and demand federal government do something. And the only choice open will be martial law. This is the meaning of pressure from above and below. To put over police state measures at home, they need chaos, crime, and anarchy in the streets. Or, as they say in revolutionary circles, the real action is in the reaction.